Yeah, I want to share with you the the sports. Let me see. So today I'm going to share special one ah huh? on a route that I will take. Okay, so uh, to add on today session. Okay, so basically normally I I'm a lazy person lah. I like to go routes that is in favor of the current lah. Okay, so the current let's say going high tide at Okay, let's say today. Uh. Let, let, let's go on today. Okay, so you see today's tide. It's going up here at 1.30. Okay, so let's say you launch around 7.30 to 8 o'clock a.m. So 1.30. So after that, you will change tide down here. So basically, the tide coefficient is for quite low. The speed of the water, 6 hours. And then going down is... So it's what? 27, 7, 6 and a half hours. So going down, quite slow lah. Even though there's a height differences of... So 6 hours here and then uh, six, 6 and a half hours there. So basically, after that, afternoon slightly stronger but it's okay because 6 and a half hours. Um, you can look from here. Okay, so bring up bigger here for you guys to see. So you can see from this direction, it's going up. So let's say you launch from 7.30 to 8 o'clock So going up, you will be going to the west So the current, the water direction will be going out to the west 1.30, you go back to the east Let, Let's look at Google map So wherever you launch, probably in the east area like Pungo or whatsoever, Pasir Ways, up to the Changi here um, So it's up to you lah Anyway we will start by going to the west in the morning so for example you are launching let me share for the benefit of people who actually launch on vehicles lah uh, like the recent one that I actually went ok so I actually launched at car park 1 here car park 1 here ok so it's just opposite um, Changi village go through the roads here there's a roundabout and then go to the car park one there's, there's a toilet here it's a coupon parking so you need to do your your parking app to actually do your parking ok you can shower here also uh, one of the toilet has a has a pipe that you can actually fill up your your ice bucket or what to wash your kayak or something like that lah so it's quite a useful instruction for you and among this stretch of uh, trees there's one very tall tree in front of the public toilet. So let's say you're coming back, right? So let's say you're coming back from from here, from uh, but uh, what the Malapapan. So you're coming back. There's a red boy. So you can see the tallest tree here. So you just head on to the tallest tree. Should be able to 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 head back to the toilet because in front of the toilet there's one very tall tree here. Yes, I mean it's very obvious lah. You can see the trees like. Like, uh, what's here? Like, very straight. And then, I've got one very tall tree there. That one is where the toilet is actually. Uh. So, from far, that's how I, I look at, you know, safe energy. That's the most important. So, you can actually position your kayak correctly. And then, with that general direction, better there. Okay, so, uh, if you were to launch towards the west, launch from car park one, go straight to the red boy. I think the tallest tree is here. Yeah, you can see it's over here. Okay, so red boy somewhere around here. Okay, so you just head on straight towards the red boy. You paddle, and you reach to the this part here. Malam papan over here. So from from here you go to Malam papan and you fish. Okay, so how to fish at Malam papan? So right now. Okay, I, I share, uh, I share. Right, so if let's say the current going to the west, so in from the screen is like from the right to the left, lah. Okay, from right to left. So from right to left. So what I normally do is, uh, the rock is in this direction, uh. Think of it like a. Okay, so the rocks are uh, is like this one. This is the eh. Let me change the color. 
Okay, this is the the green beacon. Okay. And the rock, I may put color orange ah. And then I'll change to this. So, this. Okay, the rock shape is like that one. Okay, then there is one rock here. rock here and then there is a, a platform here yeah. so basically this is the general fishing you know how I should, should to look at lah. okay so if your current pushing down here right you should position your kayak in a manner of like say you from here lah. You drift down slowly here, so you get a, a a good drop off up, drop off up, drop off up. The possibility of fishes hiding around this corner here and here. All right, there even fishes that are actually here. Grouper are normally here against the current lah. All right, so that's how you go. You should just drift, fish, go up, drift, fish, go up, drift, fish, go up. So try a few times, restart again and things like that. Okay. There are some uh, big fish waiting over here because a lot of the water actually got blocked by this block, uh, this structure here. So the water has to flow more onto this side. Let me put water blue. So the water direction will be somewhere like this. Okay, so water coming here. Okay, so a lot of the bait fish were actually flung around, will be, will be hanging around here. So for those people who are interested in barracuda, what? <laughs> over there lah. The Aba the barracuda work. so this is on 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 the very famous spot lah. So this is when the current going from the west, going to the west lah. So uh, please take note. When the when there's no bite, I would say you might see fishes in the fish finder. But over here, very strange one. I think the bait in front of the fish also they don't want to eat one. There's certain timing to it. Uh, I don't know why, but that's the thing over there. When they are biting, they are biting. When they are not biting, it's quiet. But like I said, it's just a hobby, right? So, you just fish a few times like that. Go there again, come back. Go there again, come back. Then, done really. Then, fish behind here for a while. Then, chow. So, now you're leaving this place. Huh? You can straight away go to Kelong 17. Okay, so this... Okay, I let me share with you the, my route. So it's from the going to the west, ah. So I try here already, right? Now I'll go here. Take note, ah. Pulau Sukudu, ah. This place, ah. Check Jawa. Ah. Cannot fish, ah. If you see people laying net during the daytime weekdays, please call MPA hotline and inform them. MPA will remove the net. I say again, MPA will remove the net because they're not supposed to lay any nets there anyone if you know any if you saw anyone laying net there just call mpa mpa will come mpa will remove the net over here and please do not fish there you can get fined by mpa i say again if you fish behind the pulau you can get fined Okay, let, let's say for example there are ladies that wants to go to the toilet. Okay, uh, maybe the water going down already a bit. You can actually paddle behind Pulau Sukudu, the rocks here. In between the rocks, this place here, there's a beach. Ah. Okay, so you can come in, the kayak here, beach for a while. Then, do your toilet business there for ladies. Ah. Okay. Important note ah. 
And then if let's say got rain or whatsoever, uh, I think that's the only place that you can take shelter lah. I don't know. But that's what I normally go lah if need to pee or what. Uh, then go there lah for ladies lah. Okay, so we look at the, the strategic location of Kelong. Okay, look at the location of Kelong lah. Okay, this area he, here is shallow water, a lot of rocks, then there's a drop off here. So like from 3-4 meter, then become 10 12 meters ah. Then here is 16 meters. So the slope here is crazy. You can actually try to fish here by drift fishing. Alright, you might get a big red emperor. <laughs> it is quite common there lah. And then... This particular area is quite strategic over here. Alright, so I would recommend that you fish around here for structures. Okay. So if I say the current going to the west, the kilo will be shifted to the left. Alright. Then when the current shifted to the left, the ropes here are not uh, tightened. So they are like loosened. So probably the rope is like below, pointing downwards here. Only lah, very slack like that. So you might be able to fish around here. Okay. It's quite safe for you lah. Like I said, do not hang on to the kayak or do not... Eh, do not hang on to the kelong. And then, uh, you know, uh, avoid their ropes, position yourself, things like that. So just, just take note lah, you can fish around this, this borderline here. It's very good for quite a small, medium-sized groupers. Uh, you might even have uh, sickle fish there. Water depth is about 8 meters, 9 meters like that lah. So not bad. And then uh, I think for these areas here, you want to fish, it's like, to me like nothing lah. Only this side here, maybe drift fishing, maybe got something lah. But I would say not really good to fish. And our dear Uncle Dave ah, <laughs> like to park the boat here and then fish here. <laughs> so I don't recommend any kayak to actually go here anything that associate with Uncle Dave I think avoid lah avoid let us avoid Uncle Dave so this area here is good for a one round tour only okay so just tour one round if the car moving here then just go away then just fish a bit for a while then come here slide down then come in come out 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 done ready then go here. Okay, this is a very famous Kelo. So famous that PCG go there many many time. It's called Kelo 17. Okay. Well, I thirsty sure. <laughs> Kelo 17. So, Kelo 17 is very famous because there have been many many occasions where either the net break or they release fish on the spot. Okay. So, they release fish on the spot uh, for prayers lah. I, I actually went there recently and, and I actually uh, went over and then witnessed how they actually do the chanting, you know. And then they release some fish, they spray of water here and there, things like that. It's a very peaceful event uh. I, I really enjoy it by watching them. Um, release fish doesn't mean release mango jack all the way. <laughs> it can be um, also small bait fish. I seen that day when I went, they released this small bit fish. Uh, a lot of them, so they just take and throw. So I think they are they are fries lah. So they actually release all these fries out. They don't really release uh, the huge, huge uh, MJ or grouper thing that. So they are not necessarily when they do this kind of releasing of fish, it has to be MJ or grouper. Uh, typically, they would release it around here. The ceremony was being done around here. So, looking at the geographical, uh, how it looks like, right? the fish might be drifted downwards to this direction, downwards to this direction. Okay, when it's going high tide, so the high tide will be this direction. So, the fish might hang around here if they release. Uh. Uh, like again, this one, a lot of structures around here and here. A lot, really a lot. 
Okay, there are a lot of cases where the net actually broke. Uh, a lot of boatmen also like to hang outside it, and some of them drifted too close. And that's where they call the PCG, and then you know PCG come and then chase them away, lah. For us, I would say, uh, you want to fish here, can be careful because the current can be very very strong. Uh, simply because of the 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 depth change around in underneath here. So meaning, uh, I think there's deep water here and deep water here. So when the water comes below the kilong, there's like a a small. Uh, I think like a obstruction below, where the depth, uh, become high. Uh, mean not so deep, it will be higher. So the water has to flow through there and then exit out. So, uh, the, there will be an increase of water velocity o over over here lah. Okay, so always be careful. Like I said, uh. Learn to control your kayak, position your kayak properly, things like that. Get the get the correct kayak for yourself, lah. Essentially, so um, the positioning of this place from afar, I would say, the most productive place where fish hang out to feed would be generally where the bait fish are and where uh small baits that they the fish can feed on, lah. I would say it's actually this one and this one. Okay, based on my experience, ah, uh, kilongs that are quite close to coastal area uh, generally are more equipped with small crabs and other stuff, lah. And bait fish are always uh running through the kilong that slightly closer to the shore, and so during the high tide to uh either low low to high or high to low or something like that, ah. Uh, the fish like to hang around outside here lah, and that's where you can actually try to fish out for for big groupers lah. So the one I got complained was over here lah, as you can see. So we um, actually this area here is actually very good. Okay, where I suspect the fish has to go out, go in, go out, go in from here lah. When they are feed feeding here or what lah, then they want to go out ah. Then the then the grouper will ambush them ah. So it's I, here like nothing, but here quite a few. Alright, so from there, I will actually head on straight down to Batu Putih, which is over here. So my my path is from here. Here, go, here, then here, here, then straight. Here then down here, batu putih. Yeah, batu putih is over here, the red beacon. I would say, uh, when you reach here when it's high tide, ah, uh, whoo, very nice place to fish. Um, you will need to have some heavy sinkers if you want to play the fifteen meter mark, uh, and the twenty meter mark. Because this deep water has about maybe nine meter tall rocks, or ten meter tall rocks that you can actually try. I tried last time a few years ago, and my biggest catch was uh, a eight plus kilo baramandi there. The baramandi is here. Hmm, the drop off here. So, uh, often or not, if you are uh, you want to fish. This area here is very productive. Okay, there are caves here inside this rock. There are caves, and there are rocks in between. So be careful, and uh, there are fishes hanging below here also. Okay, mango jacks. If they are being released, they boro boro go and find a place to lepak lepak at that in numbers. Normally, it's around here. Sometimes got people lay net to catch the the mango jack. So they are usually around this drop off here. So there are even rocks here. Okay, there are rocks here, here, and here, and there are also underwater rocks here. So you can try here. It's very good. And during high tide, this area is is fully submerged. Also quite good. After which, I will just normally, if let's I see how lah. If the current still moving to the west. 
I will try to fish this three k long here. Yep, this three k long. If still got time, I will fish around here at Smith Marine outside here. Then head back. Head back is from here. Just head back. Head back. Head back. Head back. Head back. Head back. Head back here. Head back to the where we come from. Then until malam papan. Then head back. Here lah. So that's my that's my usual route. We're coming close to one hour. <laughs> one hour of dedication. Ah, uh, so yeah lah. That's my route. If I were to go to Changi Kapak One, I hope you guys uh, can understand how I, I you know, plan my route. It's always essential for you to to plan your route well, you know, and uh, it's always essential for you to actually have a contingency plan. Wherever I go, I have a place to to take shelter from. Go here lah, go here can take shelter, can take shelter, can take shelter, come here, can take shelter, here lah, here lah, here lah, that kind of stuff. It's very important lah, for those first timer. I say again ah, uh, you can only do kayak fishing uh, at Kelong so what lah. Only when your kayak can be controlled easily against the current, can turn easily. I say again, can turn easily, ah, can turn easily. Ah, uh, can you know position the kayak well? If you cannot, you have to abort the kelong. Some kayak are not meant for kelong. Okay, some kayak cannot go close to kelong. You know, without bumping onto the kelong, get stuck to the kelong. You know, your propeller drive. Or rather, get stuck to the ropes and things like that. You know, then you need to shout for help. Hey, help, help, help me, help me, help me. Ah, uh. I help quite a number of time people to to bring them out from the kelong. Okay, so let me change back. Um, yeah lah. Uh, know the limits of your kayak. You know, you you get what you paid for. Okay, I don't want to mention what kind. Alright. Um. It's very challenging for fishing at Kelongs. Uh, let me share some of the pictures here. Okay, so I transit over. So these are all from Kelongs, ah. The the grouper here. Oh, Kelong, 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 Kelong. Okay, let's say for example your kayak has some difficulty in turning. I would suggest Kapak Seven lah. You can get Mango Jack lah. So don't need much of turning lah. But you want to go kilo, you need to uh, do that. So see all this kilo, kilo, kilo. Mm. So all these are all kilo also. See, some also kilo. Mm. So all these are all kilo, kilo. Uh, this one all kilo. <laughs> Uh, this one also kelong, kelong. Oh, this also kelong ah. <laughs> so yeah, um, you get to to actually you got to actually know what you want to buy. Okay, yeah, don't 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 just look at it. Wow, it's so nice. Wow, oh, can float. Ah, uh, buy. <laughs> uh, get the correct kayak suitable for you lah. Uh, okay lah. So if you got any questions, just let me know. It's like a DM. Uh, ask me anything. No problem. I'll be happy to share. Uh, I'll be live again shortly. Uh, to I need to set up my kayak and uh, I will share with you guys on my set up my kayak. So that in in the event that you actually want to buy a kayak or if you want to you know better improve your kayak, you can follow suit what I'm using. Uh, as well as you know, uh, you can you know, uh, probably want to change your kayak. <laughs> yeah, so that's about it lah. I'm gonna have my lunch now, uh, and then do some prayers first. Okay, so right, so thank you for tuning in, everyone. 
do share these videos to your friend while it's still here.